thank you very much for your kind words and secondly for inviting me to be here on this occasion, which I think is an extremely important occasion, um, and in a really important sign of resistance to a dangerous and oppressive revolution that is now sweeping the entire entirety uh, uh, of Western civilization um, in both, on both sides of the Atlantic, in both halves of Europe. Um, almost all the ideas uh, and arguments I advance in this brief talk are views I've held for most of my life. Right. Previously, however, I held them in a kind of moderate or dispassionate way. Today, I find myself advancing them passionately, even angrily, because our educational and cultural institutions are now controlled increasingly by woke barbarians, not invaders from outside, but barbarians from within the walls of all the, these institutions. Um, and whereas I once would have lamented that we are living in a culture of loss, a culture of forgetfulness, a culture of amnesia, I think we now have to say that it is actually much more serious than that we are living in a culture of what Robert, Roger Scruton called a culture of repudiation. We are deliberately repudiating all of the important uh, principles and values which have shaped our civilization, and particularly our educational institutions and universities. And therefore, I want to um, go back in this, these few remarks to the question of um, uh, what are the purposes of a liberal education. Uh, I deal with this at all levels, obviously with the university level, but also because at the moment we see the same revolution sweeping the secondary schools and even, in fact, the primary schools, as well as tertiary education. Um, and, and we have to, in a sense, respond to it at those levels. Now, the first purpose of education, it seems to me, is the disinterested search for truth. That's why, ultimately, universities exist. That's obvious. And it should not itself be a subject of controversy. But matters do not quite end there. Uh, only a relatively uh, modest minority of students possesses either the talent uh, or the passion to be genuine scholars. Modern society, with its, uh, uh, doesn't really want to accept that. Its egalitarian ethos makes it reluctant to accept this limitation and it seeks to direct more students into scholarly work than are suited to it. And that has bad effects on the students, very often, and on scholarship itself. I think it leads to the overproduction of research and to the creation of college disciplines that are largely dissociated from anything we would normally recognize as the search for truth, disciplines that soon morph into essentially propagandistic um, political activities in which only one side of an argument is permitted and dissenters from that argument excluded and marginalized. Most departments of gender studies and cultural studies fit into this uh, characterization. Sometimes they explicitly say so themselves. And because disinterested research sometimes establishes facts or provisional scientific truths that conflict with ideologies strong in the academy, that leads to the drift of scholarship towards the postmodern denial of truth itself and its replacement of truth with the notion of different but scholarly, different but equal scholarly perspectives and narratives. Um, and over time, of course, uh, those different perspectives uh, lead to uh, the argument that all that matters, well, that power has replaced truth as the prevailing object of inquiry. The second purpose of education is that it should prepare its graduates for the world of work, either giving them a specific body of knowledge needed to protect practice some particular uh, occupation, law or accountancy, but also instilling in all students a good general education uh, that will suffice them to s prosper in life. Education does not seem to be doing that job we expect and used to receive. Um, too many graduates leave college with quite inadequate general skills, even down to the level of being able to write a literate and comprehensible letter. As for the acquisition of skills um, relevant to a particular job, one sign that colleges may be doing an inadequate job there is the large increase in recent decades in the number of students going on to study 
for PhDs or in law schools. Uh, it begins to look as though uh, further education, uh, postgraduate education, is beginning to uh, have to um, carry out the job that undergraduate hasn't carried out, just as uh, universities complain that the schools are not providing them with students um, who are capable of, um, well, who are capable of doing university work uh, without, um, without some kind of additional instruction. Um, a PhD, in my view, should not be regarded uh, as um, a necessary credential for most jobs outside the academy and certain specialized occupations. Uh, law schools should not function as intellectual finishing schools either. Their expansion is a consequence of the decline of undergraduate education, and the consequence of that is prolonging the period of academic apprenticeship before the student goes out into the world of work, wrongly sometimes, expensively, and perhaps counterproductively. Increasing the number of students without increasing the number of high quality jobs to which a degree almost automatically led when student numbers were lower is obviously a recipe for widespread social disappointment. It will swell the size of the unemployable and resentful intelligentsia, um, um, which as the distinguished historian Robert Conquest pointed out in his last book was one of the major causes of instability in Tsarist Russia and later in this century and later in the last century of, of instability and disruption in the Middle East. The third purpose of education is to transmit the values, traditions, and customs of a society to the next generation. And that's something with which liberals of um, stripes from Mill to Spencer were uncomfortable with, and I think not without reason. Um, they were concerned that a single state education would in, in, in effect impose conformity upon a society that was likely in the end to result to obstruct truth and to prolong error and then ultimately would be a species of tyranny. They expressed those fears at a time when, compared to the day, there was much greater natural conformity uh, and fewer conflicting traditions in English society. Although, of course, the different divisions of Christianity struck them as going deep. At the same time, society, if, though we might well be suspicious of the idea of um, transmitting traditions um, in, uh, through state institutions, at the same time, society needs unspoken and general agreement on a wide range of subjects. What is honesty, for instance, and when is it required? Or it will simply function less well. Indeed, it is an underlying moral consensus that creates a society, transforms a, um, a mere place uh, into a society where there otherwise would be an endless civil war between different religious come philosophical groups. Negotiating a consensus, an understanding of what is the underlying moral cons consensus of a complex society is not a simple task. Maybe it's a task that is never finished, like painting the fourth bridge. But it can't be, certainly can't be achieved by a single system of state schools, even when the moral consensus it teaches is one rooted in tolerance. I think, I, I think a good um, instructive example uh, here is the uh, uh, Horace Greeley's um, public schools in 19th century America. They performed the function of shaping a united American culture and a national personality from a culturally diverse group of immigrants. The Catholic Church believed that one effect, maybe one purpose, of Greeley's public schools was to raise a generation of good little Protestants. It therefore established its own school system. Fortunately, that system quite soon internalized the Protestant political values of Greeley's public schools. The dialogue between these two school systems both widened and strengthened the American system as a whole. The American people developed a common culture, a national identity, and a sense of common destiny, but in ways that accommodated significant differences of religious belief. That accommodation rested ultimately on a free market in religion and the absence of a state religion. But it, was the but it was the result of a dialogue between two forms of Christian belief. Now, will such an outcome prove possible within the wider range of beliefs found in a multicultural society? Or, 
Uh, will it prove possible when the government thinks that the purpose of an education is to inculcate a single set of political, social, and philosophical beliefs for the sake of social stability? That certainly seems to be the case in some West European countries. Uh, uh, people from these countries might want to contradict me if I'm wrong here, but it seeks, strikes me that the hostility uh, of both the Swedish and German political systems to homeschooling in the Swedish case on grounds, um, pres pres grounds that they may uh, inculcate values in children very different from those of social democracy means that these are live questions. They exist in the school system and in the university system. Now, how do we overcome in these circumstances the culture of repudiation that now controls both schools and universities? I don't know to what extent everybody here has noticed the degree to which recently in America there have been a succession of scandals about the ways in which, because parents have discovered that their schools are teaching their children. Uh, th these are, these are upper-class American prep schools like Brearley um, and uh, one, an Anglican state school, Grace Church School in New York, um, which are essentially teaching the extremes of woke religion, a, pre a repudiation of the concept of America, claims that white supremacy uh, are, is the basis of that country, that America is an endemically racist society, um, and in the whole panoply of, of woke uh, con convictions. Um, and, um, and this is being done in expensive schools which people in the past had provided, had bought their children that education because they thought it would give them a good liberal education as well as inculcating specific uh, religious views. Now, um, what can we do about this? It seems to me, of course, uh, a gentleman, the professor spoke before, gave a, a number of arguments. As he uh, said, however, um, we are limited to the degree to which we are able to intervene directly to ensure the, the, um, the continuation of, consi of in, in universities uh, of a variety of, of intelligent views and a, a genuine debate. Um, I think, obviously, uh, as, uh, as, as this occasion illustrates very strongly, um, what we need to do uh, is to have um, we, the power of the alternative, the power of example. Um, we do not want to impose uh, other, we do not want to impose uh, on existing universities and institutions uh, a kind of state control that would be opinion control, philosophy control, tradition control. It's not what we are about. Um, the only way that in a liberal society, classical liberal society, we are going to achieve this uh, is if the kind of education um, uh, that we provide in the collegium is one that persuades everybody else that that is what they want and that by the excellence of that education reveals the flaws in the, uh, in the, existing, in the existing universities. Um, that won't be enough, perhaps, but it will be a great deal. I think um, the, uh, as we came in today, you probably noticed we passed some demonstrators. They were holding up signs which said, education without indoctrination. Well, of course, that is what we are advancing here. As to who is advancing it most sincerely, I think we can solve that by asking the question, who are shout which group is shouting down their opponents? Which group refuses to hire people with whom they, whom they respect intellectually, but whose political views they dislike. Um, which uh, group intends to allow its students to examine the, the, good, the great books on both sides of debate? Um, which students, uh, which, which, doc, which set of people intends to um, enforce a particular point of view to the point of, of firing people 
um, or marking them down when they produced perfectly good academic work? I think we know the answer to those questions. Thank you.